Nintendo Switch is right around the corner, but let's not forget, friends, that there is another new console releasing this year, and it's called Xbox Scorpio. Today, we dig into what it could be and why that all is potentially very, very terrifying. I'm Ghost Robo, and here we go. So Xbox Scorpio is touted as the most powerful home console of all time and it is tentatively releasing this fall, 2017. Yes, Switch isn't the only brand new box that you may be bringing into your home this calendar year. Phil Spencer, boss of Xbox, says the project is going absolutely peachy. He's very, very pleased with the awesome progress of how Scorpio is progressing along and the head of Halo, Frank O'Connor over at 343, says that the specs are even beefier than he expected. So the most powerful console of all time is even more powerful. That's pretty cool. But there is a pause, there is a but, there is a worry. We've seen Sony release their PS4 Pro. And it's probably the least exciting console I've ever purchased. Now, I would love to be absolutely corrected on this. I would love a few months down the line, a year down the line, to see the true potential of PlayStation 4 Pro, to see games that were developed with PS4 Pro fully in mind, just blow my mind, and, and blow the graphical capabilities that we've come to know. Don't foresee it happening, haven't really seen it so far, and the improvements that you get really don't matter much to me. I have been a gamer for over 20 years, I play uh, nearly triple digit games every year, over 100. And the graphical improvements on the PlayStation 4 Pro, if I was anybody not covering games, I would definitely say don't get a PS4 Pro. It, it's really not worth the upgrade right now. And maybe that changes, but right now it was the most boring console release I have ever seen. And it's really not a full release, it's more of an iteration. And that's where this this whole idea for this video began because I was thinking, what if Microsoft isn't really going to do the same thing? You know, right now at the end of 2016, the rough estimates were around like 52 million PS4s and 29 million Xbox One. So it's not quite two to one, but it's basically two to one. It's enough of a two to one to have Microsoft be worried. And then you get to the lineup this year and you're like, okay, Scalebound, Crackdown, Halo Wars 2, New Forza, we're feeling okay, Scalebound gets canceled. So your, your, your big new IP is just gone. And now you, you start to feel a little worried. Because Sony has God of War, Day is Gone, Detroit Become Human, and more in the pipeline. Horizon is, is a month away. They've got a lot coming out. And they've got a sales just behemoth that continues to plod along at incredible rates. And the Xbox may outsell it certain months, and it may get some streaks, but it's not catching it. Not even close. So what does Microsoft do? And I think they have a number of options. I think games look glorious right now. I think that, you know, I'm playing the newest releases this weekend, and they look fantastic on the PS4 Pro. And there definitely is a little bit of a bump. Is it, is it a bump that, that means something to me? No. But is it a bump? Yes. And I see that bump and I say, wow, console gaming is really at a, a pinnacle right now. So I think about, man, what does six teraflops mean? What does more than six teraflops mean? What, what is this Xbox Scorpio really going to deliver to us later this year? And I say, like, holy crap, that is a lot of power. Holy crap, that's going to be some great graphics. And then I say, holy crap, how the heck are they going to manage that when the Xbox One is less than, than the PS4? W what are they going to do? Because how are you going to have games that are supposed to run on both really take advantage of all those flops? Those teraflops... I don't know that that works out so well. So then I got to thinking, what if, what if this was a whole new console and not an iteration? What if Microsoft said, hey, we lost this generation and it is in our best interest to, to restart rather than iterate? And what if the Xbox Scorpio is in fact a brand new console and it's a new generation rather than an iteration. Everything that Microsoft has said points us to an iteration, but how well did that work for PS4 Pro? You dive into the numbers, how much did PS4 Pro really boost Sony's position? Now, Sony was in a great position to begin with, so the boost, you know, it wasn't needed, but Microsoft needs the boost. And will a six teraflop system that's expected to be completely one-to-one -one compatible with the Xbox One really be a boost worth even releasing? Can they find a way to to couple these together 
and yet separate them enough to make it a worthwhile sale above and beyond a PS4, because if you want to sell the Scorpio, you need to sell it as something that is better than any PS4 out there. And to do that without breaking from the Xbox One seems a bit much to me. Now, there are three scary scenarios here that I'm going to lay out for you. The first is that the system comes out and it has a ton of specs and a ton of spectacle and not a whole lot of substance. I think that's the scariest of all. I think the worst is that they release this brand new console and they don't have exclusive games and they don't have a, a, a storyline that they can sell this thing on, right? It has six teraflops. And so what? Because again, look at the PS4 Pro and, and you try to sell that to someone who has a PS4, it's a hard sell. You know, if you're a brand new next gen purchaser, it's easier to get into the PS4 Pro. Maybe you start there because it's, it, it future proofs you. But if you're going from PS4 to PS4 Pro, you don't need to. So we need to, you know, Microsoft needs to sell the, the, the Scorpio to people that most likely already have a console. Because by the end of 2017, that's four full years of this generation. That's a lot of time. That's a lot of time. Some generations are only that long. And so the first scary scenario is that this thing comes out and it you know, has a, a boosted mode for Scorpio and it just doesn't matter. And to me, that's the worst case scenario. Another $400 or $500 console that does nothing but play 4K video and you know, show a few more pixels on the games. I really don't want that. But for some people, the idea I, I, I previously mentioned is even scarier. A new console, a new format, having to buy a brand new box, brand new discs, a whole new, a whole new generation. That's terrifying to some people because they look and they say, I just invested in Xbox One, and now you're expecting me to go to the next, the next thing already? And, and like I said, four years for the early adopters is, is a long time, but for new people, and there's a, a plethora of new sales, of new buyers, that's terrifying to say, oh my God, all of a sudden, I'm gonna become, I'm gonna become out of date. And that's horrible, right? That's really, really scary. And then for me, the scary one is they release a new console and they just did it because it really isn't justified. And I weigh in my head what's worse, a console that's not a new generation, but an iteration that does nothing, <laughs> or a new console that is a new generation and does nothing. And maybe, maybe those two are an equal playing field in terms of just, rotten scenarios. But personally, I, I know this sounds blasphemous, but I hope it is a new generation. I think that would give Microsoft the best chance to really garner enthusiasm and really gain ground. And they could use that power to buoy themselves forward with bigger, better, bolder games that even the PS4 Pro is incapable of. Because maybe this lineup shortage, maybe this, this crisis that we perceive is merely a perception. Perhaps it's a, a bait and switch, maybe it's a mirage. What if they have another lineup for Scorpio that is where their focus is? And I don't know if that's true. In fact, I would bet my money on it not being true, but what if? What if Scorpio is a new generation? What if Scorpio has a new lineup of games and a new set of titles? And that is why we see so little from Microsoft as you explore the 2017 calendar. You know, better judgment and, and smarter sense says that this is an iteration, a very powerful iteration and it will really elevate the games. And maybe they do have some sort of exclusive games and get weird kind of like new 3DS and regular 3DS, although that was a marketing mess up. I don't know that Microsoft would, would make that mistake, but maybe they do. Maybe it comes out at six teraflops of pure technological sexiness, and they also have some only on Scorpio games, but more likely, if they do the iteration, it's going to be the same games with an upgraded mode. I really don't think that is the way to go. I know that the PC market would tell you that that is great, but I think for the average console player who is not, you know, tinkering with their PC and not obsessed with the latest graphics card, I don't think that these minimal improvements are going to be much to balk at. And, and maybe for Sony it's a-okay. If you are in the lead, I think it's fine. But if you're not in the lead and if you have hopes of potentially getting in the lead again, it can't work that way. I don't think that an iterative console is going to get Microsoft beyond Sony ever. Because the PS4 Pro and the Xbox Scorpio, if they play all the same games, 
and the Scorpio looks a little better, but remember, like, they still have to develop for both, so Battlefront 2 is on the PS4 Pro and the Scorpio. Even though the Scorpio has six teraflops, can't really take advantage of those teraflops when this, and, you know, native 4K, again, the developers need to code for... Is it a new console? That's what I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Would you be okay? Would you even want if Scorpio is a new generation? If Scorpio was presented at E3 as a flipping of the page, a, a fresh start, a new chance, and an opportunity for Microsoft to once again compete and potentially overtake Sony. Because as of right now, like I said, 52 to 29, that is a blowout. And I love my Xbox One. I think there's a lot of great exclusives there. I think the system has come a long way interface-wise, and I still really think it has a fantastic controller with a bunch of really cool first-party games. But this year, the lineup is kind of in shambles. And with the Scalebound cancellation, I don't know what you bring out. And you're, you're at risk of, of slipping down a, a, a rock slide of Sony and Nintendo newness as they unleash Super Mario Odyssey, Zelda Breath of the Wild, Horizon Zero Dawn, God of War 4, Days Gone, Detroit Last, or Become Human, and whatever else they have to show at E3. Now, inevitably, no matter what Microsoft does, they have new games to show at E3, and perhaps this is all a moot point because they come out with a killer lineup, and Scorpio is iterative, but it doesn't matter because the lineup is there, and ultimately the games will define uh, the consoles. But I'm curious. Would Scorpio be better served as a brand new system. And what's scarier? A iterative console that doesn't do a whole lot? A new console that doesn't do a whole lot? A new console at all that makes you have to buy new again? Are we in a position, can the market handle a new console? The Switch is gonna sell out at launch, we know that. But that's Nintendo. And they haven't done anything for a while. Although, although, it hasn't been that long since the Wii U. And they reset there. Now, I, I don't think that the Xbox One is a failure by any stretch of the imagination. The Wii U, clearly a disaster. The Xbox One pushing 30 million and continuing to sell strong. The Xbox One S is probably the sexiest console on the market. I don't think they are at risk of any sort of rupture. But I do wonder if they would rather reach rapture. If they would rather compete and gun for the gold. Phil Spencer does not seem like a kind of guy who is content with sitting in second. And so I wonder what they're crafting. We haven't seen anything, we've just been told. Fall 2017, new Xbox. What does it mean? What exactly will it be? That's what I'm curious, and I want to know you guys' thoughts. So let me know in the comments if you think it's iterative, if you think it's a new console, and where you would like this thing to go. When they unveil Scorpio D3, what do you want the box beneath the curtain to be? I personally hope it's a new console. I think that gives Microsoft a crazy new edge I think that gives us a crazy new experience of gaming, and I think that would allow those six teraflops to really be put into practice at a, a completely full extent, as opposed to a half-assed, also ran, another mode, blah blah blah, back the box checklist. Because telling me that the PS4 Pro is exciting, it's not. And maybe it will be. I could update this video in six months and have a completely different idea, completely different tune, completely different outlook. But right now, the PS4 Pro is one of the most boring purchases I've ever made. And I sure as heck hope the Scorpio is anything but. So guys and girls, let me know. Thanks so much for watching. Have a fantastic day. And until next time, we'll see you all later.